And we're back in the LBJ penthouse talking Texas politics, and this has been another busy week in Texas politics. So let's get right to it and talk about our headlines for the week, and we'll start with Gromer Jeffers, Dallas Morning News. Gromer, what's your headline for the week? Greg Abbott at the border with, with other GOP governors. Cassie Pollack, Texas Tribune, what's your headline for the week? Uh, redrawn maps uh, for the redistricting process are finally moving at the Texas legislature. Scott Braddock, Quorum Report, your headline for the week. Even if every parent's nightmare of school shooting is unfolding in Texas, it doesn't matter. The Republican leadership only wants to give thoughts and prayers real quick and go right back to talking about the border. And Eleanor Dearman with the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. What's your headline for the week? You know, a North Texas high school shooting has renewed some conversations about gun laws in the state. It has been a busy week uh, with multiple topics ranging from several governors joining Governor Greg Abbott on the border, the Texas abortion law fight in court, transgender sports bill moving forward to the full house, redistricting maps moving forward, the gun control debate, and the election audit that former President Trump wants. Eleanor, you mentioned the, uh, the shooting incident up in Arlington and how this has renewed the gun debate. Yeah, well, we had Chris Turner who went on um, ABC News earlier this week where, you know, he basically said there's obviously still an investigation ongoing, um, questions about, you know, how this gun got into the school and how this um, student who's 18 had access to the gun. But, you know, Chris Turner basically, um, you know, criticized the avail availability of firearms in the state. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because it's the same old debate every time we have a mass shooting. Cassie, are you hearing any talk about red flag laws? I don't think right now it has the traction, uh, you know, among Republicans uh, who, you know, control both the House and Senate uh, to really, uh, you know, have a, a meaningful sort of debate right now. You know, the other big issue that took place this week was the continued crisis down on the border. We had several governors join Governor Greg Abbott on the border, but it seemed to be more rhetoric. Scott, is this another example of more hat than cattle? Well, what I've noticed over the years when it comes to immigration politics is that one side in the debate stays the same level of angry no matter what. They're, they're always outraged on the right. On the left, they do get outraged at certain points. It kind of goes up and down. You saw some Democrats even criticizing President Biden you know, over the last couple of weeks for the way that the Haitian immigrants were dealt with in Del Rio, immediately being uh, you know, transported, deported back to uh, Haiti, and you know, liberals asking, well, what kind of a future do they face? But even now that those pictures are gone and we don't see the same kind of migration pattern, at least right at this moment, it doesn't matter. Republicans want to continue to talk about that issue because it does inflame their base. The main concerns I've been hearing in North Texas in regard to um, you know, the conversation around the Texas-Mexico border has been um, you know, the, the distribution of fentanyl. Yeah, I agree with Illinois. At least this time, you know, not a lot of concern uh, voiced by the everyday Texan. Uh, about that part of it, of course, yes, uh, the Republican activists are are making you know some noise about it. Uh, but I, you know, as Scott mentioned, this is a, like an issue that's been going on for for decades, and the problem is you don't have a comprehensive Im immigration plan. The Republicans, with this third special session, continue to double down on their culture social issues. The transgender sports bill moved forward. The redistricting maps are moving forward as we expected, and the election audit that former President Trump wanted. Is this going to pay off dividends for them in the primary and hurt them in November, Scott? The Republican leadership has made the case for about eight, nine months now that there probably shouldn't even be a Republican primary in Texas, that they have checked every possible box that Republican activists ever wanted to see them check when it comes to abortion, guns, uh, and the other things that we're talking about. But the truth is, on this elections deal, uh, it's never enough for Trump. You know, I'm going to go back to redistricting just because you know, we're talking about primary elections and the general election, but if the legislature doesn't pass uh, some of these maps and if, you know, they're not signed into law by November, by mid-November, uh, we're looking at a delayed uh, primary election schedule. I, I've talked to some numbers. They're going to take congressional redistricting last. And so, you know, we're running out of time. And with that, let's sum up the week with one word. We'll start with Gromer. Your word for the week, Gromer. Immigration. Scott, your word. School shooting. Cassie, your word. Maps. 
And Eleanor, we'll wrap it up with you with your word for the week. Mine is too, but gun laws. And with that, we end another week in Texas politics.